So triggering in oscilloscopes is also a very important aspect. Oscilloscopes today, either analog or digital, and again most being digital, utilize a separate circuit to trigger from the circuit they use to acquire a waveform. So the, the signal going into the front end of the scope is split somewhere behind the connector and applied both to a trigger circuit and to the acquisition circuit at the same time. The trigger circuit will make decisions as to when to acquire the waveform based, for example, on the amplitude crossing an edge. The difficulty with having a separate trigger circuit is that both the trigger circuit and the acquisition circuit have different bandwidths, different sensitivity, and different characteristics. And this gives rise to two phenomena that is often viewed in triggers. The first thing is called trigger jitter, where the positioning of the edge that caused a trigger moves on the screen from acquisition to acquisition. This movement is a result of the different characteristics of the trigger and acquisition circuits and usually ends up being a picosecond to two picosecond and in some cases even more. And this can cause what looks apparently like jitter on the signal but actually it's coming from the trigger circuit and not from the signal. So in order to show this we have a Roden Schwartz RTO set up with a uh, one gigahertz sine wave from a Rota and Schwartz SMB100A generator. I'm going to set the level of the signal to minus two dBm just to get it full scale on the screen. And so now we're looking at a full scale sine wave on the, uh, on the oscilloscope screen. And I'll adjust the time base out so we can look at one of the edges of the sine wave. So just changing the time base. And we're looking at one edge. Now we've chosen an edge trigger here. So a simple signal crossing a threshold um, to trigger the oscilloscope. Now the trigger system in the Rota and Schwartz RTO oscilloscopes is a digital trigger. That means it takes the signal acquired by the A to D converter, that is the same signal that's being viewed on the screen, and utili utilizing digital hardware, it applies a trigger to the digitized waveform. This has two advantages. Firstly, it virtually eliminates trigger jitter because we're now we're triggering on exactly the same waveform that we're viewing on the screen. Secondly, it has the ability to, ha to achieve very high sensitivities. One of the issues that's often found uh, with tra traditional analog uh, trigger circuits is that the sensitivity versus frequency of the trigger circuit is different than that on the scope. And so you can end up with situations, for example, where there's a waveform on screen that you can view, maybe two divisions high, but you can't trigger on it because the trigger circuit at that frequency needs a four division or maybe a five division high signal to actually trigger. This can be kind of confusing uh, to the user. We'll look at that secondly. But first, let's look at the trigger jitter of this sine wave. Again, we're triggering on the edge of the sine wave. We've zoomed in so that we're looking at the one edge, and I'm going to change the amplitude level of the signal so that I'm going a little bit off screen. And this is just to maximize the slew rate of the signal at the trigger point so we can get a very close look at what the actual trigger jitter of the scope is rather than what the uh, noise in the signal might be. So looking at that edge, you can see it visually isn't moving around very much. Let's get a, look, a closer look at actually how much it is moving by doing a measurement on it. So what we'll do is a histogram of that crossing point using the histogram tool. We'll just draw a box around that. And now we see a histogram on the side of the screen. I'm going to double tap that and change it to a horizontal histogram. So now the units of the histogram are time. And I'm going to make the box as small as I possibly can. And um, I'm just going to dial up this lower edge. And then I'm going to position the box right at the crossing point. And so now if you can see, there's actually a very sharp histogram right here on the bottom. What I want to know is a standard deviation of that histogram. That will give me the trigger jitter. And so I'm going to press my measure tool, and I'm going to measure on that histogram. And I'm going to select for my measurement standard deviation. So we'll go over there. And you can see the standard deviation. Uh, let's see if we can get the time scale just about right. Um, and so now we're looking at the standard deviation. If you can zoom in on that measurement, you can see that it's about 468 femtoseconds RMS. Um, on a 2 gigahertz oscilloscope, that's a really small trigger jitter. It is virtually zero. And I would also add that most of that jitter that you're seeing is due to the small amount of vertical noise on the instrument. And we're using probably the most challenging signal to trigger on, that being a sine wave, because its slew rate at the crossing point is extremely slow uh, relative to the uh, frequency of the signal. Now, if we make the signal smaller, we can get an idea about the sensitivity of the trigger. So I'm going to turn this measurement off, and I'm going to reduce the signal level down to minus 50 dBm. So again, we'll set the level to minus 50 dBm. It's a very tiny signal. Let's turn off that histogram, 
Now let's adjust our time scale out and we'll adjust the sensitivity up and get a closer look at that. Now, a couple of things to point out here is there's a trigger level, which is this uh, dotted line on the screen, and there's a trigger hysteresis, this bar, this green bar below that. One of the advantages of, of using digital trigger is the ability to generate this trigger hysteresis, which allows one to reject high frequency noise in the trigger and obtain a stable waveform on the screen. I'm going to adjust the hysteresis of the trigger so that it's much smaller and I'm going to do that relative in terms of divisions. And I'm going to set that hysteresis to ooh, maybe 0.05 divisions or so. And I want to set my trigger to normal mode. And now what you're seeing here is a signal triggered and reliably triggering on a very small, this, in this case, this signal is a millivolt, it's two millivolts peak to peak. And we're able to trigger on it at a gigahertz frequency. This is particularly challenging to have a signal to trigger on at any kind of oscilloscope, mainly because it's such a small signal and it's at such a high frequency relative to the, uh, to the bandwidth of the oscilloscope and certainly generally to the bandwidth of many analog trigger circuits. But the Rodin Schwartz oscilloscope, because of its digital trigger, really has no trouble triggering accurately on this small low-level signal.